Chapter 2, Section 7, Two Variable Inequalities. In this lesson, what we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to graph linear inequalities and to graph absolute value inequalities. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, the first thing asks us, graph the line y equals 2x plus 3. Well, my y-intercept is 3. My slope is 2, so that's rise over run of 2. So up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1 down to left one, down to left one. Okay, that's going to get us a nice little line. Okay, so I'm going to get a line. I'm going to do the best I can to draw it on here. All right, there we go. Okay, looks like I kind of messed up on that line right there. Now, it says plot each point listed below. Well, let's use red. Negative 2, negative 3, so left 2, down 3. So that's there, that's below the line. Negative 2, negative 1, that's on the line. Negative 1, negative 1, that's below the line. Negative 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, that's above the line. 0, 4, that's above the line. 0, 5, that's above the line. 1, 6, that's above the line. 2, 3, that's below the line, and 2, 7, that is on the line. So I have 2 on the line, 4 above, and 3 below. Classify each point. We did that. Are all the points that satisfy the inequality y is greater than 2x plus 3 above or below the line? Have to be above the line, wouldn't they? Okay, that basically leads us into a in linear inequality. So a linear inequality, and you can follow on your notes, is an inequality in two variables whose graph is the region of the coordinate plane that is bound by that line. To graph a linear inequality, the first thing we must do is first graph the boundary line, and then decide which side of the line contains the solutions to the inequality, and whether or not the boundary line is included. For an inequality, okay, look, for an inequality where y is less than or less than or equal to, you shade below the line. For an inequality y greater than or greater than or equal to, you, you, you shade above the line. A dashed line indicates that the line is not part of the solution. That's just a less than or a greater than. A solid line indicates that the line is part of the solution, so that would have a less than equal to or a greater than equal to. And then choose a test point above or below the boundary line. Zero, zero makes a good one. And then check the inequality, and it should hold true. Okay, so moving on to the first example. Graphing a linear inequality. Graph the inequality. Y is less than, so we know we're going to go below. Y is less than 1 half X minus 3. So my Y intercept is negative 3. Okay, my slope is 1 half, so 1 over 2. So up 1 over 2 up one over two, up one over two. Okay, now it says y is less than, so that means it's gonna be a dotted line. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot a few more points so I can dot my line appropriately. One half's my slope, so rise is one, run is two. All right, so I have my dotted line. So I'm just gonna do the best I can, getting a slope of one half. So there's my dotted line. It says y is less than. So then what we're going to do is we're going to shade below everything below the line. All right. Good. Now we just need to pick a solution to, uh, to see if the inequality works. So let's pick 4, negative 4. So Because that's in the blue area. So let's pick 4, negative 4. Well, my solution was, or my equation was, y is less than 1 half x minus 3. Well, my y value is negative 4, so let's plug that in. So I got negative 4 is less than 1 half. My x value is 2 minus 3. So negative 4 is less than 1 half times 4 is 2 minus 3. So negative 4 is less than negative 1. That is true, so my equation works. Moving on. 
at least 35 performers, again, follow on your notes, please. At least 35 performers of Big Tent Circus are in the grand finale. Some of the pile into cars while others balance on bicycles. Seven performers are in each car and five are on each bicycle. Draw a graph showing all the possible combinations of cars and bicycles that could be used in the finale. So let's do this. Let's let X equal the number of cars and Y equal the number of bikes. How many fit in each car? Seven. How many fit in each bike? Five. So we had to have at least 35 performers. So we're going to be able to set up a nice standard equation. 7x plus 5y has got to be greater than or equal to 35. Okay, this looks like a pretty easy uh, solution to solve for. We can just find the x and y intercepts. So if you remember when we did x and y intercepts, we said, okay, when x equals 0, what's our equation? 5y is greater than or equal to 35. Divide each side by 5. So 5 is greater than or equal to 7. So I'm going to have a solution set of 0, 7. Okay. Now, what happens when y equals 0? Well, I have 7x greater than or equal to 35. Divide each side by 7. x is greater than or equal to 5. So I have a solution set here of 5, 0. So let's plot those on our graph. Okay, my rise over run. My x and y. So 5 and 0. Okay, my 0, 7, there. Draw a line to connect them. And I can use the solid line here, why? Because I knew it said greater than or equal to 35. Well, I can't have negative people. I can't have negative cars. And I can't have negative bus or uh, bicycles. So we're, only, we're, we're bounded by or restrained by our x and y axes because everything's got to be positive. All right, and we know everything above this line is going to give us at least 35 people. So let's just double check to make sure our notes work. So let's pick a point. Let's pick something pretty easy. Let's pick right here. Let's pick 5 comma 5. So 7x plus 5y is greater than or equal to 35. Well, we picked a coordinate of 5, 5. So we just plug it in. 7 times 5 plus 5 times 5 is greater than or equal to 35. So that's going to be 35 plus 25 is greater than or equal to 35. Or 60 is greater than or equal to 35, which it is. So we know this is a valid solution set. Again, what we did was we set, we found x and y intercepts. Okay, moving on. Graphing absolute value inequalities. Okay, graph each absolute value inequality. A, y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus 4 plus 5. Okay, if you remember, if you remember from the other day, we learned a shortcut where if it was y equals x, um, absolute value of x minus h plus k. And that was just going to move our graph. So our h value is 4. So we'd move uh, to the right 4. And our k value is 5. So we'd move up 5. So we'd move right 4, up 5. Okay, that's going to be our vertex. We have a slope of 1 and negative 1. So we could just graph it. But let's say we totally forgot that. So my initial equation is this. y is less than or equal to, and we're not worried about the inequality just yet, x minus 4 plus 5. Well, if you guys remember my vertex, it's negative b over m comma c. Well, my b value is negative 4, so negative negative 4. My m value is 1. My c value is 5. So my vertex would be negative negative 4, so it would be 4 comma 5. Okay, so let's say we totally forgot how to graph it fast. No big deal. We can plot points. Four or five. Okay, let's pick a number above and a number below and plug it into our equation. All right, let's use 
three above and three below. So let's go seven and one. So if we plug in seven in this equation right here, we're gonna have seven minus four would be three. The absolute value of three is three. Three plus five is eight. Let's plug in one. One minus four is negative three. Absolute value of negative three is three. Three plus five is eight. So we can plot those points pretty quickly and pretty easily. Five, six, seven, eight. There is seven, eight. There's one, five, six, seven, eight. There's one, eight. All right, so it said y is less than or equal to, so we can do straight lines. So it said less than or equal to. Now we've got to pick all solutions where less than our y value. So we got to go below. We got to go below. Okay. So I got a solid line because the number, the line is, is part of the solution set and all numbers below. All right, part B. I've got negative y plus 3 greater than absolute value of x plus 1. Okay. We'll work on that in just a second. Let me insert another graph for us real quick. All right, so part B says negative y plus 3 is greater than the absolute value of x plus 1. So first, let's set it up for just y. So step one, we got we to gotta get y by itself. So let's subtract 3 to each side. So I got negative y is greater than the absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3. Well, I got to get the negative sign away, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply everything by negative 1. And don't forget, when we multiply or divide across an inequality uh, with a negative number, the inequality flips. So it becomes y, positive y, is less than negative x plus 1, absolute value of x plus 1, plus 3. And again, we should be able to know how to plot this, and it's going to be sloping down. All right, my x value is going to be negative 1, and my y value is going to be 3 for my vertex. But let's say I forgot. My vertex is negative b over m, comma c, which is going to be my b value is 1. My m value is 1, so that's negative, and my c value is 3. So my vertex is going to be negative 1, 3. So I can go ahead and plot that. My vertex is negative 1, 3. And we know it's going to slope down. So if we don't realize it's a slope of 1 and negative 1, we can just plug in points. So I need a number above negative 1 and a number below. And again, it's probably easiest to use the equation you've already simplified the most. Okay, so a number above, I'm going to pick positive 1. Okay, so plug in x, 1 plus 1 is 2, the absolute value of 2 is 2, so negative 2, because there's a negative outside, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So if I went 2 above, let's go 2 below, so let's go negative 3. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and then a negative, negative, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Okay, I just plugged in my values for my x's and solve for my y, so I can plot my points 1, 1, and negative 3, 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1. Okay, I have to have dotted lines here, because it does not have an equal sign. Okay, so I have my dotted lines. And now it says, when I flipped it, it says y is less than that. So I would shade everything below the dotted line. So there we have it. And that goes on and on and on, all the way down as far as it would go. And you could pick points. 0, 0 happens to fall inside. So let's pick 0, 0 and see if it works. So my equation, my inequality was y is less than negative 
x plus 1 plus 3. So 0 is less than negative. Absolute value is 0 plus 1 plus 3. So 0 less than. Absolute value of 1 is 1, so negative 1 plus 3. So 0 is less than 2. So that holds true. Okay. Moving on. Graph y is greater than the absolute value or the negative absolute value of x plus 2 minus 3. So let's think about this real quick. It has to be y is greater than, so we have to shade above the line because y is greater, and the line has to be dotted. So with just those two things, we can eliminate a couple of answers. And then we know the graph's going to go down. And then we could also find our vertex, which should be, if we remember, x minus 8. So that'd be x plus negative 2, negative 3. So my vertex should be negative 2, negative 3. That being said, without doing any work, I should be able to figure out that it's answer B. But let's say it's not multiple choice. So I got y is greater than the absolute the negative absolute value of x plus 2 negative 3 minus 3 so let's find our vertex our vertex is negative b over m comma c my vertex is negative 2 over 1 comma negative 3 so my vertex was negative 2 negative 3 so let's plot my vertex negative 2 negative 3 Okay, we know we're going to have dotted lines, and we know it's going to go above. So let's just plot points, x and y. Let's just do like we did before. I have negative 2, negative 3, so I have to pick a number above and a number below. So an easy number above would be 0, so let's plug in 0. So I would get y is greater than negative 0 plus 2 minus 3. So that's going to become y is greater than negative 2 minus 3, which would be y greater than negative 5. So that would be negative 5. So let's pick a number below. Negative 4 is a good number. Okay, so that's going to be y greater than negative. Absolute value of negative 4 plus 2 minus 3, which that's going to yield us y is greater than negative, what's well negative 4 plus 2, negative 2. What's the absolute value of negative 2? 2. So negative 2 minus 3. And again, y is going to be greater than negative 5. Okay, remember, if we pick a number equal distance from our vertex, we only have to do one side. So 0, negative 5 would be right here. And then negative 4, negative 5 would be right here. We know it's a dotted line. And we know we got a shade above. Okay. So, like we said, just by process of elimination, we were able to do before. The answer is B. Next example. Write an inequality for each graph. The boundary line is given. Okay. First thing we got to do is we got to find the boundary line. Oh, it's given to us. Wow, that's even better. The boundary line is y equals 3x minus 2. Well, it's a dotted line, and it's below it. It's to the right. It's below. So the first one, a, is y would be less than 3x minus 2. Okay, the next one. We're given the boundary line is y equals the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 2, which we could have found out because the vertex is at 3 comma 2. All right. So it's a solid line, so it's going to have an equality. And it's above the line, so it's got to be greater than or equal to. So y is going to be greater than or equal to absolute value of x minus 3 plus 2. Okay. Pretty simple stuff. Write an equality for the graph. Okay, this is the parent function is just y equals the absolute value of x. 
So if you remember, it's going to be y equals the absolute value of x minus 8. So that's going to be our horizontal trans uh, movement plus k. That's going to be our vertical movement. So how far do we move uh, horizontally? We move negatively. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we move negative 4. So it's going to be y equals x minus, we move negative 4, plus, now which way did we move up or down? We move down 1, 2, 3. So we move negative 3. So my original equation is y equals the absolute value x minus negative 4 would be x plus 4 plus negative 3, negative 3. Okay, it's a solid line and it's below. So solid means there's going to be inequality, and if below it means less than. So y has got to be less than or equal to x plus 4 minus 3. That's what it's got to be. So the answer should be C. All right. Okay. Well, I hope this helps, and review this lesson as much as you need to.